Hey, what's up guys? I'm gonna be doing today, I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna, I can't talk. I'm going to be doing a video today about beta fish, which has been requested so many times. Everyone just really wants to know about the betas. Um, before I start, apparently I've been saying beta wrong. Apparently it's pronounced beta, but I've been saying beta. I'm sorry. Like someone actually, someone actually got really offended that I say beta instead of beta. It's too hard for me to change. And I told them that. I was like, I can't change now. I've been saying beta all my life. And he was like, this stupid girl. And he just, he was mad. That would be like if someone, it'd be like if someone came to me and told me, by the way, your name is actually pronounced Talor, not Taylor. I can't change. I've been saying Taylor for all my life now, so I'm not gonna start suddenly saying Talor. So I can't, I can't say Beta. It just doesn't sound right. Imagine if my name was Talor. Hey guys, it's Talor here. Okay, obviously I got a new camera and it's awesome and I've been so excited about it and I love it and all that great stuff, but I'm already getting hate about my lighting. I've only made like two videos with my new camera and people are already like, Oh, your lighting sucks. And it's honestly just like, really? Can't you just give me a break? To please all those people who are not satisfied with my $600 purchase of a camera just for you guys, just for you, I am now using my fish light to film. So no one is mean to me anymore. I just want y'all guys to love me and you know, think I do nothing wrong because that's totally realistic. And then someone told me I should have just bought a light instead of a camera, but y'all obviously know how bad my camera was. I mean, I literally had people asking me, I had someone ask me why I was filming on a toaster. I don't even know what that means, but I still kind of understand it. I still kind of do. And then, you know, why are you filming on a potato? People did not like my camera quality, and I didn't either. So I upgraded that, and my lighting will come soon, but until then I'll use a fish light so I don't disappoint all of you. The more I film, the more I get comfortable acting like myself. Like in my older videos, I was so serious. Like I would like be like a robot talking about my animals. But now I'm kind of getting more comfortable with y'all. So I'm gonna start acting kind of weird sometimes. That's just the real me. That's the real Talor coming out. Now that I'm done rambling, let's get to the actual topic of the video. How to take care of a betta fish. I'm gonna take you through all the steps of betta fish care and how to set up a betta fish tank. So let's get started on betta fish care. I can already see a comment going, it's pronounced beta. Okay, um, first things first about beta fish is you need to pick a tank. When it comes to a tank size for your beta, anything over 2.5 gallons is good. Now before you tell me, oh, you know, beta fish can live in a cup, watch my um, beta myth video if y'all haven't seen it yet because I talk about some things that you might have heard about betta fish but actually aren't true. And really, if you wanna provide a good quality of life for your betta fish, just get them at least a 2.5 gallon tank. It's really not that much money, guys. Those are like 40 bucks and that comes with everything. So if you can't spare that much money for a fish, please pick another hobby. So 2.5 gallons or bigger. Anything under 10 gallons, you cannot put another fish with your beta. There's a lot of speculation out there about, you know, if it's even good to put your beta fish with other fish. I do it successfully in a 10 gallon tank. I haven't really, you know, seen any issues. Um, I wouldn't recommend it if you've never had fish before. You really should only do it if you know what you're doing because you need to know what to look for and how to know Every, it's, it's, it's a longer process and it's harder work to maintain. But if you have anything less than a 10 gallon tank, please don't even consider it. Don't consider mixing. I've seen some people get away with it in smaller tanks, but it is so much harder. Because the littler amount of space you have, the more um, aggressive your beta is gonna be over the territory. After you choose your tank, you need to worry about water. You need to worry about your water and where you're gonna be getting your water from. It's perfectly safe to use tap water as long as you use a water conditioner. Beta fish are very hardy and they can definitely handle tap water as long as you condition it. If you don't condition it, you are literally just putting really harsh and dangerous water into that tank. You're just like asking for the beta to die. So just get a water conditioner. If you can't afford a water conditioner, you probably shouldn't have a fish because water conditioners are literally four dollars. I have a water conditioner that's like this big for all my tanks and that was eleven dollars. You only use so much of it every time it's gonna last you a long time even the small bottle. All you do is you get the water conditioner and you dump it in the water and then you add the water to the tank. Anytime you do a water change I'd recommend adding the water conditioner to a separate bucket full of the new water instead of adding it directly in the tank. This will help you more accurately dose the new water instead of like trying to figure out how much water you just added and 
adding the water conditioner only for that amount. It kind of helps you if you have a new, if you have a separate bucket. Water changes for a beta tank, you can normally go like three weeks without changing the water once the tank is established. For the first, you know, two months, you're gonna wanna change the water about 15% every week and if you're only gonna do it once every three weeks after that you really want to do at least 25% if not more every three weeks after your tank is cycled. But for the first four to six weeks please try to keep up with weekly water changes. This just helps your fish live happily in the water while the nitrate cycle works its way through and everything gets established in your tank. A beta needs a filter and a heater I don't care if you think your beta doesn't need a filter, it does. If you don't get a filter for your beta, I honestly would do like 50 to 100% water changes every five days. And it's just a lot of work, it stresses the beta out. I think it's better to just have a very low flow filter. I use a Fluval 20 and it has a little bit of an adjustable flow nozzle on it. So you could turn the water flow way down and it's not gonna harm the beta. Betas aren't good swimmers, so whatever filter you get, make sure it can either be adjusted to make low flow or it's naturally just a low flow filter. Betas are tropical fish, which means they live in 78 degree water or higher. Because of this, they need a heater in their tank to mimic how they would live naturally in the wild. Most heaters are automatic and will go right to 78 degrees and stop and just keep the tank steady right there. We got the tank, the water, the filter, and the heater out of the way. Now we have to look at decorations and gravel. For substrate, you can use gravel, sand, anything you want. I just recommend pre-mixing it in another bucket before you add it to your tank. This just gets all those particles and stuff that are just like little chunky pieces. It gets them to disperse in another bucket of water before you add it to the tank, that way your tank won't get super cloudy. For decorations, you have fake and live. Both are options for a beta tank. Now with fake plants, you want to get things that aren't made out of the really um, rough plastic because this can actually hurt your beta's fins. I've had plastic decorations in my beta tank for about six months now and over time you can slowly start noticing that his fins are just slightly torn on the tips and it could get a lot worse than that so it's really best to go with another kind of material other than plastic. Now if you're doing live, just a little extra work goes into that. For example, my tank does have live plants now, and now I have to dose the tank with CO2, with plant food, and I had to get a good light for my tank. When it comes to lighting for a beta, you can really use anything. You could use really any kind of bulb, any kind of thing you want. As long as he has some form of light for six to eight hours a day, he's good to go. But if you're gonna keep live plants, you're gonna need a little better lighting. They make bulbs that are specific for plants. A good bulb is the Floramax. There's a bunch of other lighting out there that's good for plants. But really, if you're gonna have live plants, you need to have subsequent lighting for them. Please get a hood for your tank. I don't care if it's a tiny tank or a huge tank, please get a hood. But sometimes, it, sometimes a beta will accidentally just jump out of the tank and then it's gonna die. So put a lid on your tank so it can't jump out. When it comes to feeding, there's flakes and pellets and um, frozen food. I really wouldn't do flaked food, it's just messy. I use pellets and I use uh, frozen, a mix. For pellets, you only need to give your beta like three to five pellets once a day. Some people go a whole week without feeding their beta and they say that's the best way to keep them healthy, but I just, I sympathize with the beta too much and I wouldn't want to go a week without eating even if I could. I'd want to get some food in me every day. So I'm going to feed my beta every day. Betas just don't have very big stomachs and they tend to overeat and it ends up harming them. So because of this, you really want to have a very limited day. It comes to tank mates for the beta. Good luck. Like I said, I would not recommend it unless you've been doing this for a while. And on top of that, you have a tank over 10 gallons. Some betas are just you know, inherently super aggressive and just they cannot go with other fish. Sometimes, no matter what you do, no matter what method you try, you're gonna fail. Understand that if you aren't able to bring the fish back if it doesn't work out, those fish are most likely to be harmed or killed. So you really wanna have a plan set up that, okay, if this doesn't work out, I either have a separate tank to put them in or I can bring them back to the store. You just wanna have a backup plan so you don't buy a bunch of fish to watch get murdered by your beta. The best tank mates for a beta are bottom feeders. This is because betas swim on the surface and bottom feeders swim on the bottom. Bottom feeders need a little bit of a different kind of food, something that sinks to the bottom for them to eat. I have three quarry cats in my beta tank and they do fine, but I also have some tetras and some guppies. These are a little more risky because tetras tend to nip fins, guppies will compete for food, things like that. 
So you really have to watch when you feed to make sure they're both getting their food, and you really have to watch to make sure those tetras don't bite your beta's fins. It's important to understand that tank mates will sometimes make your beta more alert and more active, and it might just, you know, look better for you to have a tank full of, you know, little fish instead of just one fish but it doesn't necessarily improve the quality of life for your beta. The beta is not going to socialize with the other fish or anything like that. So don't think that your beta is lonely because he's alone. He's probably perfectly fine. And for female betas, there are things called sorority tanks. That's where the, beta, the female betas can live together. Um, that normally has a pretty good success, but every once in a while there are female betas that are just as aggressive as the males and they will fight to the death and it just won't work out. I feel like I covered everything, but I also feel like that was kind of too easy. I feel like I have to be missing something. I don't know what I'm missing. It's like 2 a.m. right now and I'm making this video because I've said like 10 times that I was gonna upload it. But the last time I filmed this video, I filmed it with my tank running in the background and like literally all you could hear was the tank going and it was just so terrible. Uh -uh. It was so bad. It was so bad. So after editing the whole thing, I decided uh-uh and I refilmed the whole thing. So that's everything you need to know about a beta and how to set up his tank so he will be happy and healthy and you know live a great life. Betas do normally live at least two years. Um, a lot of them live five to ten years, but you know, please don't assume that every time your beta dies after you know a month or two, that that's just its natural lifespan and it's time to get a new beta. Understand that there's probably something wrong with your tank or your water quality and you need to improve that before bringing home another beta just to die, okay? Thank you for subscribing to me even though I used to film on a toaster and I had really bad lighting and I pronounced beta beta. That one's still happening. Just thank you all for subscribing and all that fun stuff. I'm gonna kind of start switching things up now. I'm gonna do one video where it's animal education and the next video where I kind of do a more personal vlog because I do just like talking to you guys, even if it's not about teaching y'all about animals. I wanna give y'all some variety in my videos, so expect that from now on. Um, unless I just can't think of anything to vlog about, then I'll do another animal education video. Even on the vlogs, I'll try to, you know, throw in an animal because I understand y'all guys like seeing my animals and I don't want y'all to be like, follow this girl because of the animals and I just watched a whole video and there were no animals. Unsubscribed. So, you know, I will just, you know, be talking. Suddenly a hedgehog will appear in my hand. Look how cute, guys. Doesn't this just make you want to subscribe? Oh, you're just so cute flopping around like that. Or maybe I'll just be talking about something really boring that just makes you really want to unsubscribe to me. And then suddenly there'll be a lizard on my head and you'll be like, never mind, I love this girl. But yeah, thank y'all guys for subscribing. I hope all of y'all who wanted this beta fish video learned something. I'm sorry if my face is like super oily because of the lighting. I just am trying to get y'all to love me by using my fish light so y'all don't criticize my lighting anymore. I'm gonna go put him back before he poops on my head. Okay, I'm gonna go edit this now, and then maybe I'll sleep, even though it's gonna be like 5 a.m. when I'm done editing, but I probably won't sleep because I have schoolwork to do. <laughs> Thank you guys for subscribing. Bye. This is the creepiest wave I've ever done.